Did you know that a huge reason English changes so often is just movies and TV? It has such a huge impact on the daily English that we use daily. If a movie or TV show is that popular, and then one of the characters just invents a new word. Dark Bill! The dark side. We repeat it in real conversation and then it just becomes part of language. And if the movie's so famous that people know what the story is, we just use the movie title as a verb to quickly explain a situation. Like, you gonna camp by me, love me? You know, transform me from zero to hero, geek to chic? Oh, he wants us to love don't cost a thing him. Oh, please, she's all that me. So today you'll learn 10 new English idioms and expressions that came from movies and TV shows. <music> to catfish. We all know this one, right? You meet someone online, you think, wow, you're pretty. You start talking, you think, wow, we're soulmates. But then you meet and in real life, they aren't who they say they are. This situation came from the original documentary, Catfish, which later spawned the amazing MTV show, Catfish. And now everyone understands the term catfish to mean someone who pretends to be someone else, usually online. I don't think I've ever been catfished, but honestly, when you're talking to people online, you're never really sure who that person is. Please be careful out there. So to use catfish, you could use it like a noun. Um, that girl you're talking to, I think she's a catfish. Or as a verb, I think she's catfishing you. The origin of the term catfish came from that documentary. One guy said, if you put catfish in with cod, it makes the cod last longer because it keeps them on their toes, keeps them guessing, they can't relax. And he compared that to people, saying it's good that people act like catfish because it keeps us on our toes, keeps us guessing, and keeps life interesting. I don't know if I agree with that, but I, I don't know, what do you think? As if. This next one comes from an amazingly 90s movie called Clueless. If you haven't seen it, Paul Rudd's in it, and yeah, he just doesn't age. Anyway, when a guy wants to ask the main character, Cher, out, her response is this. Ugh, oh, as if. Everyone understands that she's saying, definitely not. That would never happen. For example, if your boss wants you to work on your day off, you might want to say, as if. Be careful though, don't actually use it in a business situation. It's not formal and it's very direct. You're saying, um, yeah, absolutely no, no. And like I said, it's also from the 90s. So maybe it's cool to say in like a retro way, but it is already old fashioned. I'm sorry, millennials, it's true. To gaslight someone. When someone tries to convince you that what you see with your own eyes, hear with your own ears, isn't actually happening. They might make you question your sanity. And it's usually just for their own benefit. Like they're lying and they want you to think you're crazy. They are gaslighting you. Cuts up a three for the win. No good. For example, if a girl sees with her own eyes her boyfriend kissing another girl, but when she asks him about it, his reply is, no, no, you imagined it. It's all in your head. You, you're crazy. Then that person is gaslighting you. I thought this expression came about in like 2016 when all the Trump stuff happened. But actually, no, this expression comes from 1944 in a movie of the same name, Gaslight. The story is the same. A uh, husband tries to convince his wife that she's going crazy. Gregory, are you trying to tell me I'm insane? That all the things that she's seeing and hearing aren't actually real. What? You had nothing in your hand. So, like, yeah, don't gaslight people. It's not cool. Your bucket list. Now, apparently, according to the internet, this expression didn't exist before the movie, The Bucket List, in 2007. However, I definitely remember using it and seeing it 
before that movie. Unless the internet is gaslighting me on this. Anyway, it comes from the expression to kick the bucket, which is like a jokey way to say die. And your bucket list is everything that you want to do before you die, before you kick the bucket. So what's on your bucket list? Let me know in the comments. For me, I don't know. What's on my bucket list? I haven't gone skydiving yet. That would be on there. However, that's probably the way that I would die. So maybe, I don't know. Do you remember the year 2020? When every day felt the same. You wake up, brush your teeth, go not go to work, eat more food, go to sleep, repeat for the whole year. Everyone described that situation as being in Groundhog Day. In the movie, the guy, Phil, gets stuck in a 24 hour loop. Every day he has to repeat the exact same day over and over again. So if you have that sort of situation where your every day doesn't change, feels like you're in a loop, you're in Groundhog Day, my friend. A glitch in the matrix. When something happens in real life that shouldn't exist because it looks physically impossible. Like all the other clouds are moving, but there's one cloud which is perfectly still and doesn't move. That shouldn't exist, right? You might say it's like a glitch in the Matrix. Of course, this comes from the movie, The Matrix, where he sees two identical cats walk past each other. He just says, oh, it's deja vu. But his besties are like, yeah, nah, mate, that's a glitch in the Matrix. And if English isn't your first language, a glitch is something where your laptop, your phone, some machine does something it shouldn't do. For example, if you tap the volume button on your phone and it takes a photo, that's a glitch. It's like saying, if we lived in the matrix, someone messed up the programming because that's a glitch. That shouldn't exist. A mind meld. I've used this so many times and I never realized it came from Star Trek. In the show, it's a technique to share thoughts, experiences, memories, and knowledge with someone else. It's like telepathy. However, in real life, we use this before a meeting where we're gonna share thoughts or make a plan or brainstorm with another person. It's not telepathy, but we still call this idea session a mind meld. Oh, we need a plan for this project. Okay, let's meet at 2 p.m. We can mind meld think of some ideas about how to do this. Spam. When I was researching this video, this was the expression that hit me most. Like, whoa, that's where this comes from? So those emails that you get, which are like rubbish, asking for money or trying to sell you something that doesn't exist, we call them spam emails or just spam. And the reason we call it spam is from Monty Python. In this one sketch, they go to a cafe and they try to order something, but everything on the menu is just spam. Spam, spam. They can't escape the spam everywhere. See the connection? So now you know. To jump the shark. This one is more uniquely to describe movies or TV shows. Think of a really popular TV show. If that TV show lasts a long time, eventually people get bored and people stop watching. But then the TV show does something crazy to try to get people watching again. They're like, whoa, see, we're still interesting. This comes from a TV show called Happy Days. Literally, the main character jumped over a shark on water skis. Apparently, this seemed too obvious as a stunt to just try and win people back and it was unnecessary. Because now this expression lives on to describe a TV show that does something large and unnecessary to try to win back viewers. Wait, Walking Dead has pirates and ninjas now? This show has really jumped the shark. And finally, my bad. There is some confusion over when the first time this expression appeared. Some say it was clueless. Jump for the bike one. Oops, my bad. Some say it was Louis Armstrong in the 50s. And some say that Shakespeare invented it. This is a very quick, casual, Sorry, my bad. So don't use this with serious things. For example, if you run over someone's cat, don't say, oops, my bad, because it sounds very casual and it doesn't sound sincere. 
If you need a sincere apology, I made a whole video about different ways to say sorry. You can find it here. So have you ever been gaslit by someone? Have you ever been catfished? Ever had a Groundhog Day situation? Or seen a glitch in the matrix that shouldn't be there? Let me know in the comments and to my favorite comments, I'll give little tiny hearts. Don't forget you can study more English with my ebook. It's available on patreon.com slash papateachme or my website, papateachme.com. And I'll see you in the next class. Bye.